if you are here for the first time today, we don't hand out visitor's cards. There are visitor's cards in the back if you want to fill them in. We are just going to send you a message. Thank you for being here. Um, we're not going to come and agitate you at home. <laughs> but if you want to have a house call, you know, just also write your name down. I'll come and visit. And please put your address and your phone number down and I can come and visit you if you want me to come and visit you. I'm not going to come and visit you like the Duomini, okay? You know, so I'm not going to do that. I just fall out at your house before you go to work, Jock. Park you in. <laughs> yeah, because he doesn't answer his phone. <laughs> so the Lord took me on Wednesday morning. I got the scripture in my heart in Ezra. I didn't know it was in Ezra. I, the scripture just came to my heart, and I had to go to my friend Google and find out where the scripture is. In Ezra, now Ezra is in the Old Testament, it's one of the prophets. If you can look at that, it's about two-thirds into the Old Testament, maybe halfway into the Old Testament. Before Psalms, you'll find Ezra. It's good to know your sword a little bit. You know, it's, very, it's very good to know. A little. But if you're like me, just take out your phone, download the app, okay, and you can click which <laughs> Then you don't have to like page all over the show. All right, Ezra. Now, Ezra was a prophet, and he went back to Jerusalem to restore spirituality, genuine, authentic spirituality. The guys were off the map. They were doing whatever they wanted to do, as per normal, as per us humans. We do what we want to do now. You know what the beauty is about Jesus being the cornerstone? That you always know where to go. He doesn't move. Jesus never moves. He doesn't change. So you always know where to go. Maybe you can take this home. It's something I, while we were worshiping, this kind of came to my heart. Is that Jesus stays in the same place. He remains the same. And if you and I need him, we know exactly where to go. If we need protection, if we need Provision, if we need healing, if we need forgiveness, we know where to go. Amen. Just go to him. He doesn't move. His phone number doesn't change. Okay? His address is 2 Knee Street. Okay? In the suburb of bedroom. Now, on your knees in your bedroom, you will find him there. All right. And Ezra was sent back to these very, very bad Jews, you know, they were the very bad Jews. They were just stuffing up. Okay. And there's this king, I can't pronounce, I just want to show you his name in verse 12, if you've got your Bible open. For those that don't have their Bibles, I'm going to spell it to you. A-R-T-A-X-E-R-X-E-S. Artaxerxes. Who knows how to pronounce that? <laughs> Please come and tell me afterward. Né? But I've got the word tax in there, so he must be a king. Né? Our tax. <laughs> and this king said, he wrote Ezra actually a mandate. This guy is a Gentile. He's a, he's a, he, re, he refers to himself as king of kings. Né? Typical uh, pagan uh, 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 king, you know, those pagan kings. Listen to what, what verse 6 says. Some of the children of Israel, sorry. Then Ezra came from Babylon, and he was a skilled scribe in the law of Moses, which the Lord of Israel had given. The king granted him all his requests according to the hand of the Lord, his God, upon him. So, Ezra went to the king and said, King, I want to go back to Jerusalem. I want us to rebuild Jerusalem. I want to establish the religion. I want to get people back to God. And the king said, Because I see the hand of the Lord upon you, go. And you'd go with this letter. Whatever they ask of you, you give them. And so this letter, he would come to you, Rustin, supply. And you have to give. And he'll come to you, and say, see, see what the king says? Supply. If you don't supply, the king is going to come down upon you. This Gentile pagan king. Because of the hand of the Lord that was upon him. 
Listen to verse 9, 7 verse 9. On the first day of the first month, he began his journey from Babylon. Okay, And on the first day of the fifth month, he came to Jerusalem. So that's five months that he traveled. According to the good hand of his God upon him. I want you to see a difference here. He's talking about the hand of God. He talks about the good hand of God that is upon him. Ezra 7.10 For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord. And a question when I read that, when it's, it's are we preparing, prepared our hearts? Have we prepared? Are you preparing your heart to receive from the Lord? Wilco? Or is this just normal, mundane... This guy was a trained scribe. He was very good in the Word of God. He knew the Bible. Yet he had to prepare his heart. How, how do we approach the Lord? You know how many people you talk to, people you listen to, um, mingle in? Yeah, no, I, know, I know the Lord. You know, God's good, God's good, God's good. Have you heard people speak like that? Everybody's a friend of God these days. Now I've got such a good relationship with the Lord. Good. But nothing else talks about that. Nothing else says that that person has got a relationship with God. They just say themselves. Ezra says, for Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach his statutes and his ordinances in Israel. You see, the good hand of the Lord came upon Ezra because he was willing to seek the Lord. In Ezra 7.28, And he extended mercy to me before the king and his counselors, and before all the kings of the mighty princes. So I was encouraged as the hand of the Lord my God was upon me. And I gathered leading men of Israel to go with me. Ezra 8, 18. Maybe you're cottoning on where we're going this morning. Then by the good hand of our God was upon us. They brought us a man of understanding of the sons of Levi, Mali, the son of Levi, the son of Israel. Ezra 8.22 For I was ashamed to request of the king an escort of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy on the road, because we had spoken to the king, saying, The hand of our God is upon all those for good who seek him. It's important that you understand this this morning, that Ezra didn't want to ask this earthly king for protection. He says, I'm seeking the Lord, and the Lord will protect me. And he said, the Lord's hand is upon those who seek him. And I had to take an act of faith. In this journey, in this life where we live, and how many times in life where we walk, we face hardships and we go through difficult times and we would want somebody next to us and we would want somebody to help us and they say, no, we want no help from you. The Lord's good hand is upon us and He will provide and He will protect and He will go before us. And they had to put some act to their faith. Now the Lord will protect us, but sire, give us three legions of your army. No, then I'm saying that the army is protecting me. So don't worry about that. We're going to trust in the Lord. And the Lord will protect us. The hand of our God is upon all those for good. I want you to understand this. God's hand is on you for good, not for bad. Get this, a lot of people talk like this. They say it like this. The Lord's going to punish me. The Lord is giving me a hiding. Maybe the sickness is from God. Maybe this is happening. Maybe my car broke down because God's trying to tell me something. The hand of God is upon you for good. 
not for evil. I want you to get that. The hand of God is upon you for good and not for evil. I know some people, their boy is five years old and got brain cancer. And some of the friends in the group said, maybe that's God's way of telling them not to immigrate. They're ascribing evil to a good God. We prayed. We trusted the Lord. But in God's divinity, He chose to take the little boy home. God wasn't trying to punish them. God wasn't trying to tell them you're doing something wrong. It wasn't no. God doesn't speak through circumstances. I want you to understand, God doesn't cause floods to reach you to tell you something. He doesn't do that. God speaks within circumstances. While it's raining, or while the sun is shining, while it's going well with you, or while it's not going so well with you, God's message, Jesus remains the same. He says, I love you. I am for you. My hand is upon you for good not for evil. He's, Wayne, wouldn't it be easier if we can just get a hiding and get it sorted out? No. God doesn't work that way. He says you're forgiven. The weight that you carry, the anxiety that you carry, the abandonment that you carry, He says I've taken it away. Just go to Him. We just have to go to Him because His hand is upon us for good. 8.31, Ezra 8.31 Then we departed from the river Ava on the twelfth day of the first month. This is a year later to go down to Jerusalem. And the hand of our God was upon us and He delivered us from the hand of the enemy and from ambush along the way. Can you see God's hand is upon you not to deliver you to the enemy, but to deliver you out of the hand of the enemy. God's hand is upon you to steer you away from ambush. And when we say that in today's modern context, I want you to understand that there, you have got an enemy. You've got an enemy that's out to get you, Maddie. He's out to get you. He's actively out plotting a plan to get to you, to destroy you financially, physically, emotionally, relationally, spiritually. He wants to destroy. He wants to rob you of your confidence. He wants to rob you of your purpose. He wants to rob you of your destiny. He wants to rob you what God's called you for. He wants to rob you from the provisions that God wants to put in your hands. He wants to steal and kill and destroy. But God's hand is upon you. Now look back at your week quickly. Just in your mind, would you just run back to Monday? Monday blues. You know? What happened on Monday? Maybe that taxi made you mad. Maybe your child made you mad on a Monday morning. Don't want to go to school. Uh, don't want to study. Homework not done. The course block is not in the ne? Full of myth. I know many a, many a mom goes mad about that. Go to Tuesday. What happened on Tuesday? What did you go through on Tuesday? At work? What did, how did your boss speak to you? How did your teacher speak to you? What happened on the inside of you? Did you get mad? Wednesday. We can just go on and on and on. Thursday and Friday and Saturday. What jealousies have come up in your heart? What angers come up in your heart? God's hand remains on you. 
God's hand remains on you. Romans 8.31. We can go to Romans 8. If you page your Bibles. Look, we'll go, what are you trying to say to us this morning? I, all I know is that this morning you need to hear God's heart towards you. Romans 8.31 says, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? You see, the, they came against Ezra. Enemy comes against you, wants to stop you, destroy you, thwart your plans, derail you. But if God is for you, who can be against you? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. You see, so many times we go into this place where we want to justify ourselves. I was good this week. I prayed this week. I read my Bible every day this week. I had a good attitude this week. I didn't get hammered this week. You know? I didn't get high this week. We want to justify ourselves. It is God who justifies us. If you are in Christ, I want you to understand, if you are in Jesus, if you have said, Jesus is my Lord, if you have positioned yourself behind the cross or underneath the cross and the blood of Christ is over you, He justifies you. If you are standing in this position, this is a choice you can make. You and I can make this. We can move ourselves. How do I do that? All I have to do is say, Dear Lord Jesus, I receive the work on the cross. That's all you have to do. The guy that hung on the cross next to Jesus, all he said is, Think of me, Lord, when you come in your kingdom. That's all. He was a murderer, he was a thief, he was a criminal, he was under judgment, he was being nailed to the cross to be killed because he was a criminal. And Jesus said to him, today you will be with me in paradise. You see, so many times we make it so complicated. We make it so complicated and the weight of that complication just weighs us down and we lose our freedom we lose our liberty we lose the fact that the chains are off and you can run the good hand of God is upon you the good hand of God he justifies who is he who condemns it is Christ who died and furthermore is risen who is even at the right hand of God who also makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? Are you going through tough times? Physically, emotionally, spiritually? In your relations, your finances, your health? Tribulation? Will that separate you from the love of God? No. Or distress? Or persecution, people coming against you. Or famine, do you have lack? Or nakedness, don't you have enough? Or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet, in all these things, in our daily lives... What's happening at school, what's happening with the stress of school, the marks, the studies, the silly, ridiculous tasks that they have to do, my word. That's the biggest load of nonsense I've ever seen in my life. That's just my personal opinion. I think there are teachers that agree with me. Okay. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Through him who loved us. How do you become more than a conqueror? If you really conquered a thing, how do you become more than a conqueror? If you really won, how are you more than a winner? 
You see, that's what Christ did for us. He's more than enough set us free. He is medicine. The Lord speaking to you this morning. It does not matter what is happening. You are more. From the youngest to the eldest, yeah, you are more than a conqueror. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter how you've stuffed up, tripped up, fallen. You are more than a conqueror if you are in Christ. And that's a choice you can make. You and I can make that free will decision to say, Jesus is my Lord. That's a choice you can make. For I am persuaded, and this is Paul, that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate. I want you to put the word me in there. Me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I want to, I want to this morning encourage you. The good hand of God is upon you. He is upon you. And nothing can separate that. Nothing. And though the enemy might come, and though all these other things might come, the good hand of the Lord is upon you. 1 John 4, 4. I want you to page your Bible. That's the letter of John, the first letter of John 4, 4. I'm going to read it there. If you are born again, if you are born again, you would know where you sit seated. You would know if you are born again. If you doubt that you're born again, or you're wondering that you're born again, you're probably not born again. Okay? But if you are born again, if you are a child of God, His Spirit will testify with your spirit that you are a child of God. For some people, it happens at a specific time, specific date. For other people, it just happens somewhere along the line. And for me, I had a very awesome experience. The 5th of August, 1999, about quarter past 10 at night. I know exactly when. I asked my missus, she said, I don't know, I've always just believed. My granny, they, their generation, they were all born Christians, man. You know? They all believed in Jesus. They just never doubted that. They all just, and that's the way it's supposed to be. That our kids get raised up. It's like, yes, Jesus is Lord. I have accepted. He paid the price for me. It's very natural. But some of us stoters, no. Nah. Don't follow my eyes. Us naughty guys. We need a day and a time and a moment where we said, okay. Okay, yes. Indeed. I need to be saved. I've, 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 I've come to the end of me. Amen. Who knows what I'm talking about? Don't put up your hands. <laughs> it's a rhetorical question. <laughs> Rustin, you look guilty. <laughs> Some of us have to come to that place. 1 John 4, 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is He who is in you than He who is in the world. The good hand of God is upon you. I want you, when you go out this morning, I want you to see the hand of God on you. Starling, come here. Or oh, Benjamin, come here. See God's hand on you. See Him put His hand on your life like this. And he has got you. See him pull you into his arms like, I've got him. Hmm? I've got, you want to do what? Askis? Stand up. You first got to get through God before you can get to him. The enemy first has to get through the Lord before he can get to you. See his hand on you for good, not for evil. Not for bitterness, not for resentment. And when you, you know what we do? 
We like to be backseat drivers. We want to pop out there. So where are we going? So come not terug, man. Stand here. God's got you. He says, I go before you. Even when we do this, even when we do that, even when we go over there, because we're putting our head out the window like Ace Ventura. This will be nice. Yeah. God pulls you in and says, I've got you. Okay. You don't have to eat the bugs. <laughs> if you go cycling, one of those bugs eat you. It's kind of sore, especially if you go fast down a downhill. Even when we, and that's our nature. Our nature is, we want to go over there and kijk bikkie hoe gaan dit daar. God says, no, nothing will separate you. The good hand of God is upon you. When you walk out that door, I want you to dankie sien, kan gaan sit. When you walk out that door tonight, know that you are more than a conqueror. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. God is for you and not against you. His hand is upon you for good and not for evil. So when you find yourself in challenging situations, know that God is in that situation. Put His hand on you. For your good. Not for your evil. He wants to guide you. Prepare your heart. Just prepare your heart for the word of the Lord. Just be ready to hear Him. In that moment, be ready to hear Him. Let's close our eyes and we pray together. Father, we thank you so much this morning for your word. Thank you, Lord, that as we sit, I can bless your children. Lord, I ask for your good hand upon them. Thank you that Jesus paid the price, Lord. Thank you that Jesus made the way, Lord. Thank you that it's you that justify and not us that justify ourselves. This morning, Father, Will you give us a vision of your hand upon us? Thank you for the good as it is in heaven, so on earth. Thank you, Lord, that nothing can separate us. And I bless them with the knowledge this morning that they are more than conquerors. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Let's go have some coffee. God bless you.